Hi everybody, we're in my home shop today to talk about abrasives. And I want to cover just some basic things about abrasives. I'm looking to talk a little bit about the four major groups of abrasive materials and how they're used in the shop. So we'll look at some stuff at the college in a little bit, but right now I just want to give you a basic introduction to the abrasives. There are four major groups of abrasives that are used in industry. Uh, starting from the least used, or the lowest amount of use, uh, would be diamond. Uh, diamond is a very good abrasive. It's used for grinding very hard materials. Uh, it's also used in uh, uh, construction applications for grinding and cutting uh, things like concrete and block, stone, stuff like that. But in the industrial shop, it's primarily used for grinding very hard things. Uh, the diamond is impregnated into, usually it's a metal type of a wheel. So the diamond, it's not a solid diamond wheel like some of the other abrasives we're going to see. It's just coated on the surface, impregnated into that surface, and it doesn't need to be very deep. And the reason for that is diamond is expensive. Even industrial diamond is expensive to produce and to formulate these uh, grinding discs. Um, so you see it for used for uh, tungsten uh, electrodes, for uh, gas tungsten arc welding, grinding, pointing, shaping them. Um, it's used for grinding a lot of other kinds of very hard materials. The next one on the list is cubic boron nitride, and CBN, as it's abbreviated, is also an expensive abrasive, and that's used for uh, alloy materials and hard stuff, things of that sort. And that also is kind of pricey, so you don't see it as commonly used as some of the other abrasives. The next one up on the list, which is fairly common, is silicon carbide. Silicon carbide is often used for grinding soft materials that would otherwise clog other wheels, such as aluminum, copper, etc. But it's also used for grinding carbide tools. And I have a silicon carbide wheel mounted on this grinder right here, on this side, and it's kind of a greenish gray, so they're often called green wheels. Some of them are very green. This one here is not really quite so green, um, but I have a silicon carbide wheel mounted here. And they're very handy for grinding carbide tooling, things of that sort. I don't grind a lot of aluminum or copper soft materials with this kind of uh, a wheel, um, but it certainly can be used for that because it doesn't load up. In other words, particles of that metal don't weld themselves into uh, the spaces between the individual abrasive grains. Finally, the most commonly used abrasive is aluminum oxide. And aluminum oxide can take many, many different forms. In the machine shop, it's generally used for grinding wheels such as this one here. This wheel here is a, an, an aluminum oxide wheel. And I have a couple of other examples of aluminum oxide wheels here. And you can see they come in, in a couple of different sizes. Actually, they come in many different sizes, not a couple. Uh, some of them are very, very large. Uh, probably the most common sizes are somewhere anywhere between 6 inches in diameter and 10 inches in diameter, which you'll find on grinders in bigger industrial settings. Uh, I've seen them 14 inches in diameter. Uh, I think I've seen some that were actually 20 inches in diameter, but um, 14 inches is pretty big, okay? Um, the speed of the motor is very important in relation to the size of the wheel. The centrifugal force that imparts itself on these wheels is tremendous. And that's why uh, the ring test is important and visual inspection of these wheels, how you store them, how you handle them is very important so that you don't develop any cracks in them. If you have a crack in a wheel and you put it on the grinder and you start using it, uh, that crack could cause a failure, and it could be like an explosive failure because there's a lot of force generated by these wheels spinning around. In order to make sure that you are using a wheel that's rated for the grinder's speed is by the blotter, which contains uh, information. The blotter here, I'll show this up close. Uh, this is the blotter, and the blotter shows you things like the size of the wheel, the width of it, the size of the hole, and some other information that's written in a code. And you'll see that uh, in the textbook uh, that talks about how to decipher that code. Uh, but the blotter is there to help protect the wheel from the forces of clamping with the 
uh, larger washer-like plates that go on either side of the wheel when you mount this up to the grinder. So unless I bring the camera in close, you're not going to be able to see, but I've got them here. There's four on this machine, two on each side of each wheel. Um, these are usually vitrified bond and they are generally in the middle range of hardness. Uh, again, you know, middle range uh, allows for a wide variety of applications. Um, so generally, a machine shop will have at least one of these kind of pedestal or bench grinders like we have in our shop at school. Uh, these are very common. I have a couple of these. This is the only one that I have uh, grinding wheels mounted to. The other one has wire brushes on it, but uh, they're very, very useful, and this gets a lot of use here in the shop. Um, but the information that's on the wheels, the, the purpose of the blotter to protect the wheel, and the information that can be found on the blotter is very important. Aluminum oxide is used for a lot of other kinds of uh, sanding and grinding applications and one of them is this. This is a six inch, uh, I'm sorry, four inch uh, belt sander and this is probably the most used machine that I have here in the shop, believe it or not, uh, of all of the machinery that I have here. Uh, this probably sees uh, the most use. I use it for plastic and wood and of course metal and other materials too that come through and it's very useful. It's very, very helpful. Um, you can get abrasives in all different forms on belts of all different sizes. This is a, a four by, I believe it's 48 inches is the circumference of the belt. But you can have them custom made. In fact, this is an older grinder that uh, I have to have the belts made for this. So I have a lot of belts for this because there's usually like minimum orders for custom sized belts. Uh, but other machines are standard. Uh, a four by 60 is a common size. Um, a six by uh, 48 is a common size too. Uh, I have a belt sander over here at a camera range. It's right over here. <laughs> right on this side that you can't see. And anyway, it's a two by 72. So this uses a 72 inch circumference belt and it is two inches wide and it has uh, aluminum oxide abrasive on it. And this also tells me what grit this is. And I'll show you this. It's got an, a number 80 marked on there. Hopefully you can see that. And that 80 tells me what the grit is. But you can get very, large range of grits for all of these belts. Uh, you can also get different widths as, I'm, as I was saying. Um, I also have a grinder that takes one inch, uh, one inch wide belts. Uh, these are very coarse. These are 36s and again that number is printed on the inside. So I have 36s in a one inch, uh, one inch belt and then these are some of the belts that I have saved uh, from from this belt sander, belt grinder, belt sander, different people call them different things, uh, same difference. And this is a 100 grit right here. You can see the seam going across here where the belts, belts were made. And this one here is a 60. So this is a little bit coarser. Uh, so you can use a number of different kinds of uh, grit belts for different purposes. Obviously, the coarse grits take more material off faster. Uh, the aluminum oxide is coated onto these belts and many of these kinds of belts use a um, kind of a rubberized paper type of a backing or a fabric backing uh, and, that, and that gives them a lot of strength so they stand up really pretty well if you know how to use them right. Um, another application of course is, is for things like sanding discs and on the sanding discs here uh, these are uh, PSA or pressure sensitive adhesive uh, abrasive discs. These would be used on a DA or a dual action sander like body shops use. And these also have the numbers on here. You can see this has a 100 on here. And this is a this is a 220. So uh, again, different abrasives or, or same type of abrasive, aluminum oxide abrasive, but different grits. Um, all right, very common. And then when you go to the store just to buy sandpaper, you'll end up with something like this. And I tear this up into pieces to use it for whatever it is I need to use it for. 
And again, too, this has the number on the back. This is a, um, uh, a 100 grit sandpaper. And the type of material, this is on a very, um, uh, very thin paper back. Okay, uh, and this would be considered a dry only sandpaper. Uh, some of these uh, are wet or dry. This is a wet or dry type of a uh, sandpaper and it's all about the backing. You can see on the back here it says waterproof abrasive paper and this can be used um, wet or dry, meaning that if you were color sanding sanding smooth a paint job on a car or a piece of furniture or something, whatever it might be. It's usually on a car though. Uh, you can use water to prevent the abrasive surface from clogging. So this can clog up. And this, again, has stamped on the back P400, which tells us what the abrasive grit size is. Okay, so grit size is talking about the, the size of each individual grain. And they are processed and segregated through a series of sieves or screens that have holes in them. And the finer particles work their way down through the stack of uh, grids that have larger holes. And at each level, those particles are stopped at that point and then they're pulled out. And that way we can separate out abrasive grains for the specific size and purpose that they need to be used for. So it's important to understand some of those characteristics. Uh, getting back to the grinding wheels for a second, uh, the grinding wheels have other information, as I stated earlier, uh, on the um, on the blotter, which gives you some information about this wheel's characteristics. So for example, I already mentioned that it talks about the diameter of the wheel, it talks about the thickness of the wheel, and it talks about the diameter of the mounting hole. It's very important not to mount a wheel onto a grinder that has a hole that does not match the size of the shaft. Some wheels uh, include a uh, set of plastic bushings that go in here, and that's acceptable. But you don't want to be making bushings, you don't want to be fabricating anything, and certainly one thing you do not want to do is try to drill out the hole in a smaller wheel to fit on the shaft of a, of a larger grinder. Uh, you risk damaging the wheel to the point where it's going to fail. Some of the other information that's on this label is not only dimensional information and also the, the uh, size of the grid of the wheel, but it'll also tell you uh, some characteristics about the wheel itself. Number one, it'll tell you about the bond of the wheel. The bond of the wheel is the method by which those grains are being held together. So in most aluminum oxide grinding wheels, the bond is vitrified, which is a glass-like construction. Uh, these wheels are uh, pressed together at the factory and then they go into an oven and they're brought up to a certain temperature where the bonding agent actually becomes glass-like and it bonds those particles together. And that's what makes this a vitrified bond. There are many other kinds of bonds. Vitrified is the most common, but there are resinoid, rubber bonds, shellac bonds, uh, many, many different kinds. Some of them are a little bit outdated and not really used very much. Um, another characteristic of a wheel is its hardness. And its hardness generally for these wheels is usually somewhere in the middle of the range of the scale of the alphabet. So an A would be a very soft wheel and a Z would be a very hard wheel. Most of these wheels are somewhere in the L and M range. Again, kind of a medium range that I mentioned earlier that makes it uh, applicable to a, a bunch of different situations. Okay, so that's just some of the characteristics. The textbook is going to talk more specifically and give you more specific information about those things, but that's really an overview of that. The next thing we need to do is look at the wheels that are used on the precision grinding. Uh, this is offhand grinding. This is semi-precision grinding, and uh, this is commonly used for uh, creating geometries for uh, tool bits, uh, for the lathe, for example. You know, offhand, you're holding it in your hand. Some people use a jig for certain kinds of things, like knife makers sometimes will use a jig. Others will work by hand. Certainly this too, the belt sander or belt grinder, if you will, is going to be a handheld thing. But 
the next thing we're going to look at is precision grinding, which utilizes a precision kind of a machine, which is completely different from what I have here. I just want to take a few seconds to show you the bench grinders that we have in the lab. This is a standard bench grinder, a pedestal grinder. There's a fine grit, 100 grit wheel on the right hand side and a 60 grit wheel on the left hand side. Uh, this machine also has lighted eye guards on it. Uh, so your eyes are protected, but yet you can still see better having the light real close by. And it also has a water pot used to cool the tool that you would be grinding. So this is common, commonly found in all machine shops. This machine here, this is a planar type surface grinder. Uh, this is a fairly small machine. Uh, they come very, very large depending upon the size of the work needing to be done. You can see the two wheels on the front of the machine are used to move the table back and forth which on top is mounted a magnetic chuck uh, which holds the material down to it through magnetic flux. The handle is used to turn that magnet on and off. And above it is mounted this blue box which is where the wheel is. And this is a very heavy duty box. It's about a quarter of an inch thick steel and it's designed so that if the wheel should shatter it will contain all of those pieces. Uh, this is uh, a manual machine, so this machine can be moved fore and aft and to the left and right with those wheels on the front, on those hand wheels. On the top here is the diamond dressing tool adjustment, and this can be moved back and forth across the face of the wheel in order to square it up or to uh, fit it to a particular size. Uh, at the very top of the machine is the hand wheel used to make adjustments for the movement of the uh, the grinding wheel itself because the table does not move up and down. The small wheel that you see here is designed to move the wheel in increments of five one hundred thousandths of an inch. Uh, so this machine is really designed for very precise work and uh, it's built very well. Uh, there are much larger and there are automatic types of machines uh, but this is very very common uh, in the machine shop. 